respiration is probably one of the most important processes in biology. And it's so important and awesome because it takes glucose and basically turns it into ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And ATP basically works like this. You have the adenosine and then you have these three phosphates sticking off the end of it, right? And they don't like being together like that. They're all packed together on the end, right? And so what happens is one of them gets kicked off and that releases energy. And then, of course, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Cellular respiration is composed of three major stages. Glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Let's start with glycolysis. In glycolysis, being the first step of cellular respiration, you start with a single molecule of glucose. Glycolysis simply adds two large phosphates onto the ends, turning glucose into a six carbon sugar diphosphate. This is at the expense of two molecules of adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy currency of the cell. After it turns glucose into a 6-carbon sugar diphosphate, it breaks the 6-carbon sugar diphosphate into two smaller 3-carbon sugar diphosphates. Here's where it gets really complicated. Because this is not an 8-hour lecture, I'm just going to keep it simple and say that a whole bunch of crazy enzymes and chemical reactions are involved to turn each 3-carbon sugar diphosphate into something awesome called a pyruvate which is going to be very helpful in the Krebs cycle. It also produces two molecules of NADH. Um, you might have heard of NAD+. They're a lot like that, except combined with hydrogen. And, of course, you produce four molecules of adenosine triphosphate, but because you had to use two in the beginning, you only get, earn a net profit of two adenosine triphosphates. Glycolysis is an anaerobic process. This means that it does not require oxygen to operate. But, if glycolysis is forced to operate in an anaerobic condition, the pyruvates formed during glycolysis will go through a process called fermentation because the Krebs cycle is aerobic. And because the pyruvates are so important to the Krebs cycle, they have nothing else to do but go through fermentation. In some organisms, like yeast, fermentation produces substances like alcohol. But in humans and many, many, many other animals, it produces something called lactic acid. After glycolysis, three carbon molecule pyruvates lose CO2 and become two carbon acetyl-CoA. Then they are transported into the mitochondria, which is a part of the cell. During the Krebs cycle, they are oxidized and eventually become NADH, FADH, and ATP. NADH and FADH will be very important during the electron transport chain, as eventually they will become ATP. Cellular respiration. The electron transport chain takes place inside the bacterial cell membrane. The NADH and FADH lose their electrons and protons, and then they leave as NAD plus and FAD. Their protons get allowed through the membrane and stay trapped on the other side of the membrane, outside of the cell. The electrons are transported across special electron conductors, and eventually come out at the end, combined with oxygen and some other things, and become water. They leave. Now all we have is a whole bunch of protons on one side of the cell and almost no protons on the other side of the cell. These protons really, really want to get back inside. That's a lot of energy there. ATP synthase is their only way back through. So, of course, 
the protons go through ATP synthase. And ATP synthase basically synthesizes them with adenosine diphosphate and creates adenosine triphosphate. The electron transport chain can produce up to 32 ATP molecules just from one original glucose, although it is more common to produce around 29.